Stop playing gimmick puppet nightmare. Is what a lot of people are saying in my comments. I don't know if I should listen, to be honest. I'm seeing a lot of people getting kind of tired of the gimmick puppet lock. Sure, Konami banned branded expulsion. It's gone. It's a little bit more inconsistent to do the puppet lock, but as I've shown in my previous videos, you can actually still do the combo fairly consistently if you have access to Cartesia and a way to a Luber or branded fusion, you actually make the combo with additional two negates. I've also posted my Copium Nadir Servant Maximus list that sends Bicephalus. It's a real lore deck and it's actually a one card gimmick puppet lock. It's a lot more fragile, but still. Now, as a disclaimer, I want to start off by saying that I'm not protecting the gimmick puppet lock. Even though I played it and won with it in my national championship, it doesn't mean I have, you know, stocks in the game or like any investment in it. It doesn't benefit me personally if people play it or if people don't. For example, in my last locals, I didn't play it, went second place. It was really good, really fun, not a problem at all. Just to say that I'm not defending this, I'm trying to look at it in an objective point of view, just to show you that, you know, it's not black or white. There are some things in between that you need to consider. Also, I think just as a preface that people want to win tournaments. This is why a lot of people played Mystic Mine, even though it wasn't necessarily ideal and people were playing Mystic Mine outs in their main deck a lot. People still in big tournaments in YCSs played engines that protect Mystic Mine because it was just such a powerful card. I think Gimmick Puppet Nightmare is not as powerful as Mystic Mine, but you can consider auto-win strategies that are really strong as things that are favorable for bigger tournaments. Albion the Sanctified Dragon is basically what we have left in order to achieve any sort of like, you know, mannequin cat-like effect. If you remember, mannequin cat has been used in decks like Sprite, for example, to summon out really strong end board pieces like Invader of Darkness, Jinzo, Testudo Arid Newman, Arc Lord Christia, stuff like that to the field if your opponent special summons something and then basically lock your opponent out of playing. Why was this okay and this is not okay? I think we're gonna break this down in terms of pros and cons and look at the alternatives. Honestly, I think the main reason why people are now saying you don't have to play Gimmick Puppet is the fact that now that it's less consistent, you end up on a much weaker board and weaker follow-up if you get stopped along the way. I'm gonna challenge you on that. I don't particularly agree that this is the fact. If you end on a board that includes Albion the Sanctified Dragon, follow up from the graveyard in the form of a Luber, and also to negates with retribution to negate stuff like Bestials, and Mercurier in hand to negate things like Bell, how are you losing to this if you can do this consistently? If you can achieve this combo, right, which is not really hard because you play five Cartesia and basically, you know, like nine ways to branded fusion, it's actually more consistent than you think. I agree if you get stopped, it's not ideal, but previously with Expulsion, if you got stopped, it wasn't ideal as well. If you got stopped on the lock and not a lot of people managed to actually banish the Gimmick Puppet Nightmare to avoid things like Bestial, and you didn't end up on a negate, yeah, you probably lost the game because your setup was a lock setup. It's not meant to break a board or fight a combo, for example. I am gonna challenge this point. I don't think that you end on less follow-up than you previously would have with things like branded expulsion. Another thing that a lot of people are saying is that branded doesn't need the gimmick puppet lock to win. Honestly, I agree. I think a lot of the decks in this format lose to the best branded end board, which honestly could be a mirror jade in red, maybe an agate in hand, maybe something with Cartesia, and you know, ad libitum in the graveyard like the good olden days. You end on two non-target banishes, you end on, you know, maybe a Chimera or a Dragostopelia to pop more cards, negate more cards, make some things level one. It's one of the best end boards ever. And if you survive that turn, you have so much follow-up that you are pretty much guaranteed to win the game. So they're saying branded can actually win. It doesn't need the gimmick puppet lock. I think this comes down to a matter of opinion. I have proven through my videos that you can achieve the gimmick puppet lock with two negates and that it's fairly consistent. And now it's basically up to you and also up to me to decide if we want to play this. If 
I would have gone to a big tournament today, I think that I would have had to make the decision on whether I want to include Puppet as one of my strategies in the deck. And, you know, I might have chosen to do that if I think it's consistent enough and if I can prove that, you know, this is what the deck does and I can protect it with things like Cross Out for Ash and Bell and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe I would have played it as well. I just want to go over the dry pros and cons of playing the gimmick puppet package in your deck. And I think we're going to have to judge it by those standards. One, it's an insta win if you can pull it off. If you pull it off, it basically means your opponent skips their turn without doing anything. Maybe barring trap decks, which we're going to be talking about. But honestly, it just prevents them from summoning. It just ends their turn. They can't start their combos. It could be a little bit different with Runic that can actually set up a lot of interruptions without special summoning or just pass their turn with a field spell. But yeah, they probably can't search it unless they open tip exactly. I think in terms of pros, you do have follow-up. In the combo that I worked on that ends on two negates, it basically provides you follow-up through a Luber, branded retribution in the graveyard to get branded fusion back because, you know, you're probably going to activate it maybe if you if they have like an interruption or something. And you do secure follow-up because you manage to bring out a Luber back to the field, which searches for branded fusion, which basically means OTK. You already have around 5,500 or more damage on the field once you lock with puppet so you know all you have to do is just get rid of the puppet and you usually have a lot of cards in hand to do that again one last time i'm gonna say it i think the ideal line that only requires quem or cartesia and a luber or a way to brand diffusion it's super consistent and it ends on two negates no one can tell me that ending on puppet lock with two negates is fragile inconsistent or easy to break because even if you open a bestial and bell you don't break this setup and honestly, before that, if your opponent opened Called by the Grave, usually, it could have been enough if you don't have the double setup. And I think the most important part for people who don't want to play Puppet because it's toxic is the value that Albion, the Sanctified Dragon, provides with other tech cards like Jinzo or Invader of Darkness against specific strategies. It's similar to what Sprite did with Mannequin Cat. You just play really good outs to your opponent's engine and you win the game by summoning them. I think overall it is very valid and sometimes it is better than the branded end board just like that. Then we're going to talk about the cons. I do fully agree and acknowledge and I'm not going to sit here and protect the gimmick puppet log. There are cons to this. I think if you don't open full combo and if you don't have a way to end on two negates and you basically pass on Albion and gimmick puppet in the graveyard, it's not going to be good enough sometimes. You lose to a single interruption, you don't have a lot of follow-up, and you have to win next turn because you don't have a lot going on on the field. I can definitely agree that if you don't open the ultimate setup, then maybe it's not worth running. And then we get to the second point where Gimmick Puppet Nightmare could be a brick in your hand since you don't have Expulsion anymore. Usually, if you just draw Expulsion, you know, you make Cartesia, you summon Grand Guignol with Gimmick Puppet and Cartesia, set expulsion, you know, sending Albion set expulsion in the end phase, that's the lock on its own. Now you have to work a little bit harder, so you consider it a brick in your deck. And of course, the biggest point is that it's not fun and Branded doesn't need it. Well, it's true for a lot of the cases. It's not fun, it's kind of toxic, it basically means your opponent skips their turn, and Branded offers so much interactive gameplay that, you know, you can play Branded and enjoy it a lot more, in other instances without Gimmick Puppet Nightmare. So I think at the end of the day, it comes down to personal preference altogether. Even from my experience, I ended up going second place 4-1 in my last locals. I did not play a single Sanctifier target, no Puppet, no Invader, no Jinzo in my deck. Still, the deck performed amazingly. The deck build was kind of like sus, but still performed because the deck is extremely strong. So it ends up coming down to your preference. Do you want to play something that people consider as toxic but on the other hand can a lot of the times just win you the game altogether at the end of the day i think that even though people say branded doesn't need this right now i would argue that with the combo line that ends on two negates i don't think it's that fragile as people make it out to be maybe people just want to play pure branded and have fun and that's absolutely okay 
I just think that a lot of people are not considering the fact that it's almost unbreakable if you open the combo. Maybe you sided in going first, maybe you don't play it at all. It's definitely up to you. I do want to hear in the comments below what you guys think about this. I know it's been a lot of, uh, you know, contentious comments in my comment section recently about me not encouraging people to play this because it's toxic, the deck doesn't need it, it's too fragile, it loses to bestials. I do want to hear your comments down below because this is at the end of the day a discussion. Leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more like this. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.